to another episode of Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am Jason, your host for tonight, um, and we are doing part two of the Frost Giant uh, painting tutorial. Um, it is uh, modeled after Harshnag uh, from Storm King's Thunder, and we base coated him completely last episode. This episode, we are going to be uh, adding some highlights. We did a couple washes. We did a black wash and stuff, but we're going to go ahead and try and finish them off. We only have two hours, and so we're going to move fairly quickly through it uh, to see if we can get her done tonight. Uh, as usual, uh, what you'll need is the Frost Giant miniature from WizKids. I've got some Vallejo brushes, a zero, one, and a two, a Vallejo dry brush, a cup of water, some paper towel, of course, some miniature grass tufts. Uh, if we get to that point where we can base it, we're going to add some of those to the miniature and a paint palette. Then we have a bunch of colors here, um, and if you want to, you can get these together as you go. Uh, all of these are Vallejo colors. Um, we want to make sure that the heavy colors uh, are the extra opaque ones. And so basically the extra opaque colors from Vallejo all have um, extra pigment in them. So basically they're great for base coating in one uh, coat if possible. And so that is what we'll be using for that. There's a variety of blues as well. You'll see on there that we have a snow effect. Um, and that snow effect will be used to add snow to the base of the mini. Um, and it, it, in doing that, uh, obviously, Harshnag and Frost Giants being in the north of the Forgotten Realms, um, you know, it will fit really, really nicely into the base and tie the mini all together really nicely. Hopefully, we will get to that point uh, tonight as we go. All right, jumping right in. So, again, really big mini, and we were only able to do the base coating and such uh, up to this point, uh, and we are, like I said, using getting highlights and washes and all of that fun, fun stuff into uh, this episode if possible. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Last time uh, we did the black wash over the chain mail and some of the leather. Um, and as usual, uh, let me say that you are live in the comments here, uh, and so if you have any questions or thoughts or even tricks that you use yourself, um, painting this miniature or other miniatures like it, please sound, sound off in the uh, chat and uh, I will answer any questions and uh, I'd love to hear from you guys as we go through this mini tonight. I think I want to do some washes. Washes take a while to dry, so we're going to go ahead and get some sepia shade. Um, the sepia shade is a really great wash. It's a utility wash for me. I use it for a lot of different things um, and it will allow us to add some depth uh, into some of the kind of leathery areas as well as the skull and such. So we're going to go ahead and grab one of our larger brushes. I've got a larger Vallejo brush here. It's actually a um, dry brush, but I like using it for this purpose, uh, mostly because I just get more done in a, in a quicker amount, of, uh, in a shorter amount of time. So I am always dilute my, my washes just a touch. And sorry, seasonal allergies have kicked in. So, uh, And so in all of these kind of light brown areas, the areas that will be leather, I'm going to go ahead and add that wash. And you can see as soon as I kind of brush that wash onto that texture, all of a sudden it really picks up the texture in that area. So we're going to do it all around the leather areas in here. On both shoulders. like so. I just love how the wash really brings out all that wonderful, all that wonderful texture. It's so cool. I'm just going to adjust this light just a touch here so you guys can see what's going on. Casting a lot of shadows tonight. Uh, and then with all of this padding down here, kind of he's got this like sort of padding in his armor. We're going to add it there. You can see right away it brings out that awesome detail. Get it in all the nooks and crannies in that area. We're also going to paint it on this side. And this base coat's been curing for two weeks because last weekend we were in uh, Ohio, Columbus to be exact, for Origins Game Fair. And uh, we held some Vallejo master classes there. We took this show basically live to, to Origins. It was so much fun. Met so many new wonderful people uh, and people from last year who came by again 
and joined us. It was pretty awesome. So, all right. So we're going to use, we're also going to use the sepia wash uh, onto the straps on his arms. There's a bit much there. So I'm going to wipe actually a little bit off on the bone area that I know I'm already going to do. And then I'm going to go back and just sop that up. And that's a little trick. Uh, you want to make sure that wherever you want that wash to be thickest, you want to hit first. Uh, if you don't want it to be super saturated in an area, don't use that right after loading your brush because then you'll just make a big mess. Put it in the straps here, around the buckle. We've all, already used black wash in these areas, but this will, uh, again, add some shadow and depth for some of these leather areas. I'm going to go in around back here, finish up the area I just added. And again, with washes, I don't, I don't brush them on. I actually kind of place them onto the miniature, and then I manipulate them in the areas I want. You want to make sure that you brush the wash into the recesses, but see how it's pooling down here? We don't want that um, because then it'll basically like obscure the detail, and we don't want to do that. So again, love to hear where everybody's from. You guys want to sound off in the comments? Where everyone's tuning in from tonight. Or in the chat, rather. On Twitch, it's called chat. Jack's Not Funny says, I just gave my nephew a couple minis for his birthday. I'm hoping he has fun painting them. Awesome. It's a great way to do it. I'll tell you, I, um, I took my son with me to Origins. It was his first show with me. Um, and we did the, uh, again, we, we hosted uh, Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials live from uh, Origins Game Fair. And, you know, I figured, you know, he'd go and help at the booth and help in the, and he ended up wanting to paint every single mini we did. And he came back with every single mini, um, sat in most classes. And then he also, it, it was funny because, you know, I knew he was kind of into painting. He really wanted to get into it. He's wanted to paint with me for a while. We sat just before Origins and painted some of the things that we needed for the show together. Uh, and it was a cool experience, but I, I wasn't sure how into it it was. Anyways, we went to Origins and I was like, hey, bud, you know, we want to go play some board games or whatever in the evenings. And he was like, no, dad, can I go back to the hotel room and finish painting my mini? Uh, and it was kind of a, a really proud, proud moment for me um, at that time. So anyways, uh, really cool. Hope your nephew loves it. Uh, what kind of, what minis did you, uh, did you get him, if you don't mind me asking? Love to, love to hear what, what you're getting him started on. I keep touching these areas that I put wash on. It's wiping it off here. Okay, so I'm going to make sure and be cognizant to only touch the base because otherwise I'm just going to mess it all up. But you can see how it's really making these kind of bone areas and leather areas really rich. Uh, it's giving really good depth. I'm loving how that's looking. I'm just sopping up a little in the areas that are a bit too much and too thick. Also trying to cover the areas that I miss because there's a few. I might as well go in here too, and I'm also going to do the fur. So I'll do the fur around the shoulders. And if you get a little bit between kind of the the skin and the fur, that's okay too because again, it's going to just add some more depth to the whole figure. This arm comes off. I think I'm going to leave it on for now. Hope that some of that paint kind of just glues it in there. Turn them around. We're going to paint onto the fur on this side. Like that. Beauty. And then on his boots. Uh, Jack's Not Funny says, I gave him the Slads, the Owlbear, and the Young Black Dragon. We also played his first game of D&D. That's so awesome. It's so great. My son also plays with us on one of our, our live streams, on our, our noob stream, where we walk people through our monthly adventure box. Uh, modules and uh, I tell you he he loves it so good on you man that's that's uncling done right Does that makes sense uncling I'm assuming it's an uncle maybe an aunt <laughs> actually I didn't even I didn't even ask it says Jack so I'm not sure but 
either way, you're definitely doing uh, a wonderful thing for, for our hobby and the future of our hobby, for sure. And it was just great to see kids, you know, walking around the show and a younger generation of players kind of turning on to all things D&D &D and gaming and RPG, and it was just great. So it was a really awesome experience. I am going through this sepia shade real fast. Okay, trying again to pick it up so I don't mess up all that wash that I just put on. That leg is done. Moving on to the next leg. Again, we have two hours, so I'm going to be moving turbo speed here. Um, and for those of you that are watching and don't have the mini uh, pa uh, primed, or, or should say base coated, these come pre-primed. Uh, if you don't have the mini base coated yet, and or you don't have the mini yet, or don't have the paints that you need yet, uh, all the VOD versions of these will be on the Realmsmith YouTube and the official D&D YouTube as well. So you guys can check that out later on once you're kind of ready to go on this thing. And I do, I mean, f for me, I'm a purist. I like to paint uh, minis the way that they appear in the monster's manual or in the, in the subject matter or the material, I should say. Um, you know, I kind of looked at Harshnag's colors as much as I could. There's not a lot of pictures of Harshnag. Uh, and so I kind of just did my best um, and to kind of assimilate what I thought or translate for me what I thought it looked like. Uh, some of this wash is actually drying fairly quickly, quicker than I expected. Uh, I did just notice, though, that last time around I missed, th I missed this side of the leather strap, so that is not good. So I'm going to go back to leather brown for a sec. DC... Uh, I wonder how to pronounce that. I always have such a hard time with some of the uh, the handles here and make sure that I get them right. I want to see DC Lacerre. Declacerre. <laughs> Welcome. All right, so I'm just going to, again, you know, this will happen where you go around a minute and you're like, oh, man, I missed this part or that part. So I'm just going to fill in this strap here. And then, of course, I'm going to go have to go back and add the sepia wash to that when I'm done, but for now it's fine. I also forgot to add a wash to this bracer, black wash, which I'll have to come back in and do after, which is okay. I do also have a blue wash that we'll use a little later on the beard area once we've kind of highlighted that a bit. Um, we'll see if this actually has to go into three parts. It may need to. Um, this one's kind of a bit of a master class sort of situation because there's so many awesome details on this miniature. Um, I also bought myself a little fan, a little portable fan that I can use to speed up the, the drying process because we take so much time drying that this actually will help, um, especially with the washes and stuff. But right now, there's so many large parts of this mini that we don't necessarily need to use the fan now, but it's handy to have one of these around. All right, um, let's see here. Where do I want to go next? I've done the, the brown or the wash on that. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I want to paint the, the skin. I think I want to start there. My idea with minis is I like to go from the inside out. So basically what that means is you're getting into the deepest areas of a miniature and working out to the highest areas. That way, when you go in, like say, for example, you did the other way around. Say if I were to paint kind of like the, um, uh, an example here, uh, like the, the end of uh, the bottom of his kind of chainmail skirt thing. Uh, if I were to paint that first and then try and get into the pants, I'd mess up all the outside areas. So that's kind of my reasoning for doing that. So I am going to uh, first work on the, um, the skin, because especially on his face, as you can see, it's really, really deep in there. Um, and some of the lighting here isn't the best for kind of seeing. There we go. That's better. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're going to work on his face first. So for his face, I'm actually going to start with magic uh, with electric blue. It's a much lighter blue than the rest of his skin is, but that's okay because we're actually going to go for like a uh, the true kind of 
or not, I don't want to say true representation, but I want to say the common representation of frost giants, which is like this pastel-y kind of um, uh, desaturated blue. Uh, so I'm going to, almost like a gray blue. So I'm going to get some electric blue on the brush, dilute it quite a bit for this case, because especially for skin, you want it to be smooth. And for me, I find that diluting the paints a little bit allows it to to, to, to run a little smoother on, on, the, on the miniature. So we'll try this here. Again, it's pretty bright, but that's okay. And we are going to basically block out all of the highest areas of the skin with this electric blue, trying as best we can to avoid the deepest, deepest recesses where we want that heavy blue to still, to still exist. So that is a really light, light blue bicep, but it's okay because we are going to use a blue wash after and that will allow it to um, kind of blend a little bit. It'll darken it down a little as well. In this case, I typically work from, you know, dark to light, uh, or in some cases I work from dark to light, but I, because I want the, the final skin to be a lighter kind of, like I said, desaturated blue color. Um, I wanted to start the, the, the kind of the dark tone a little lighter. And with this I'm using, I'm trying to use long settled strokes, not settled strokes, I should say, um, sorry I went from sepia wash. Thank you for asking me, I keep forgetting to, to bring the colors up. This is electric blue. And welcome, Jolly Tutorial Survivor. Um, hopefully, you'll survive this one. So what I'm doing is I'm 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 adding kind of longer strokes because again, if you start kind of av aggravating the the paint too much, you'll end up with really kind of you know what I'm just going to do this. Ta-da! Sorry, Harshney. Um, you'll end up with really streaky, kind of messy looking skin, and we want it to be really nice and smooth. You can see how well that uh, electric blue is going on, how smooth that coat is. And again, I'm trying to get into everywhere, but the very, very deepest recesses, just kind of those streaks. Now there's a mu muscle kind of that goes around here. There's a muscle that kind of comes in around here. And I also like to, you know, it helps a little bit to understand anatomy or how, how you know, muscles kind of fit together if possible, or at least what the groupings are, um, so that you can, when I, brought, uh, when I use my brush strokes, I actually move as best as I can with kind of the grain of the, if that makes sense, of the muscle. So I'm trying to brush it along the length of the muscle, because that will give it some texture as well. Jolly Tutorial as far as says, not sure I'd, if I remember you, this is Allie. Of course I remember you, Allie. Went to Origins and attended a bunch of your master classes. Of course I remember. Welcome. Oh, that's so cool. I believe, and I'm going to hit myself if I'm wrong here, but I believe Allie subscribed to one of our adventurer boxes right after our class, I think. Is that you, Allie? I believe it is. Now, of course, you want to be really careful in the surrounding areas because you definitely don't want to get this blue on any of the brown, like fur areas or um, anywhere else where you've done a lot of work. You don't want to have to go back and fix that at this point. She said, yep, and she, she got the paints too. That's awesome. For those of you that uh, don't know about our adventure box, we do a monthly adventure box um, that we ship to your doorstep. And basically, it's uh, as soon as you subscribe, you get part one of our six-part uh, adventure. And we have modules and candles and figures, and you can opt in for a Vallejo color pack. Um, you get like a candle that sets the mood. Um, for example, in the first box that you get, you get a candle that smells like a blazing hearth, like a fireplace, 
for the Shattered Shield Tavern, which is the first tavern that you, of course, everyone meets in a tavern. Um, and so, yeah, it's just super cool. Uh, you get the minis, and you get papercraft terrain, and you get a sound set by Sirenscape, uh, curated and created specifically for the box by us um, at Realmsmith. And so, anyways, you can check that out at realmsmith.tv. It's in the it's in the um, the little box there. A little ad for it. But I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure, Ali, when you'll get your first one, but it should be it should be fairly soon. Here I'm making sure to leave the dark around the fingernails so that, um, you know, you get the really cool. And I'll come back in here as well. So you can see that, you know, the, the coat dries, and then I'll go back over it right away when it, just to add a bit more depth and detail in there especially on the knuckles and some of the areas that would be much more, much brighter, I should say. Because the first pass on this is going to be pretty, pretty light. I do honestly wonder if we're going to need a full, possible three episodes on this, on this guy. It's possible. And I'm, I'm trying to kind of build it up in layers. And then again, adding a little bit more here and here onto the areas that would be hit by the light a bit more. Now, in, for this mini, I'm imagining that the light is coming from above. And then we're, we're going to do some kind of object source lighting from the axe. Definitely don't want to rush this mini. This is one of those minis that I'd like to have. Um, it's kind of a showpiece mini, right? I ran Storm King's Thunder. I'm still running Storm King's Thunder, I should say, with my um, with one of my live stream groups. Actually, um, we're actually playing tomorrow night at 7:30 uh, on our Twitch and YouTube. Um, love you guys to tune in. But we, uh, it's been awesome. And Harshneg was a was a character that was beloved is beloved. I don't want to give any spoilers for those of you that are playing Storm King's Thunder. But you can see there how I'm building up the highlights as I go. Again, one pass, which is fairly diluted, will be a darker blue. And then each additional pass, each additional layer will become lighter as that color kind of becomes more opaque in that area. So you can see down here, it's fairly dark, and I'm just going to add a little bit more in the middle, and that will highlight it a bit more. I'm wiping off quite a bit of paint on the edge here, but that's okay, because when I paint those areas, it will be just fine. I'm really enjoying painting this mini. We also did all of the dragons, so uh, so your nephew can watch uh, the VOD versions of those dragons on our YouTube page or on the D and D YouTube page. Go back and watch them when he's ready to go. Okay, almost done this hand. Now, we're taking quite a bit more detail than we do with some minis on this one, just because, again, um, you know, with Harshnag, if you're playing Storm King's Thunder, and that's why you have this mini, and you're using it for Harshnag, Harshnag appears in quite a bit of the, uh, the, set of the kind of the, the middle of the campaign. So for me, it's worth it to put a bit more time into him, um, because he'll be, he'll be on the table a lot more. You know, if you're using a dragon, an ancient red dragon, for example, and your party fights him once, literally in a whole campaign, and a campaign can last years, and he only appears, you know, if, if you're using him just to get him on the table as a representation of a red dragon, then maybe it's not worth, you know, 10 hours of, of painting time, for example. Jolly Tutorial Survivor says the copper dragon is especially amazing. It really is. It was a lot of fun to paint. That was the first one we did. First episode we did was a, uh, 
was a copper dragon. Okay, so now I'm going to be a bit more careful. I am using the um, the zero brush here, but I may go to even my smaller detail brush because I don't want to mess up the details on the face. Well, let's see if I can get in here. It's working out okay. Get in here on the nose. And again, we're going to use a wash, a blue wash over this. So that'll help to tie it together. It'll also darken it down a, a little bit. And it'll bring back some of those creases. I think. I think we're going to use a wash. We'll see. That's the current plan. Again, trying not to get it anywhere that I've already done a decent amount of work. Because that'll be hard to... It'll be hard snag. Bad dad joke. It's Sunday, folks. It's been a it's been a long week. All right. I'm here all week. All right. So his face in there. Good mid tone. I'm also gonna get here in here on his lip. Bottom lip. Make sure that's highlighted like that. And then his face is kind of mid-tone highlighted. And then what I'm going to do, or highlight, highlighted, highlight, I don't know. I paint, I don't do English. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to do this other arm here. Again, moving with the musculature. Trying to, you know, use your brush to kind of shape out those muscles. So, you know, you can see, and, and it's fairly simple, I mean, in the sense of, you can see where the divots are, and you can kind of see where they connect. So I'm just kind of tracing them along. And again, with each pass, you're gonna get more and more um, kind of uh, depth, because in the little divots, you can just leave the least amount of electric blue, and then continue to kind of paint over them in the higher areas to bring out those highlights. Just like that. This is fun, trying to get under here. And don't be afraid to twist and turn your mini in all kinds of weird angles to make sure that you get all the spots. By the time we're done with this skin tone, this is a hard spot to get down here. By the time we're done with this skin tone, it's going to be a fair bit brighter and kind of more um, washed out than this. Because again, we're going for that pale frost giant blue. And again, depending on how this goes, I may not add a wash. I may add a wash afterwards. And again, washes just um, sometimes, they add depth, and that's kind of what they're designed for. But sometimes, even after your add kind of highlights and and shadows or layers I should say once you've added like midtones and highlight layers uh, sometimes adding a wash will just kind of bring it all together and kind of blend in the in the in the recesses and in the areas where you know you may have been a little messy or the deline the, the delineation isn't as clear Has anybody out there already painted one of these frost giant minis? If you can sound off and let me know. And if there was any kind of aspect of this mini that you enjoy doing more than another. 
I really love doing the skin. I knew that, that that would be one of my favorite kind of spots and parts of this miniature. You know, the dragons, we try to do them kind of in two hours. And we, we did well, except for the black dragon. Didn't quite get that done. And it was the same at Origins. The black dragon was the one that, you know, kind of eluded us. Um, and we're talking a lot more at Origins. And there's some distractions. We're on the show floor. So we expected uh, it to not go as fast. But, you know, and for those dragons, like I said, they don't appear on the table too much. But this guy, this guy does. This guy appears on the table much more if you use them as harsh nag in your Storm King's Thunder campaigns. Again, making sure not to get it on his gauntlets here, leaving the dark blue in the recesses and only the deepest recesses. Okay. Go back into the face. I'm going to add a bit more magic blue just on the edges. Again, the more opaque it gets in the center of the lip here, as well as on the cheekbones and the side of the nose here. There we go. I may actually do his eyes fairly early in the process, um, mostly because I don't want to mess them up afterwards um, or mess up the skin afterwards. In fact, I may even do his eyes and even his teeth before we go much further here. Maybe after I'm done this, this skin tone. Now the other hand, the other fist. It's nice not to rush through a miniature though. Uh, like I said, the first four episodes of Dragons were a bit more of kind of a speed challenge for me. I just wanted to see how fast we could get through um, the Dragons. And if we could do them in two hours, and we did. For the most part, we did. But this one, you know, sometimes you just want to take your time with the mini. And this is this is one of those minis where I just really want to take my time. Harshnag has a bit of a special place in my heart. Is there anybody else who's watching that was that, that went to Origins? Any highlights from the show? Those that already spoke, Ali, was there a highlight of the show for you at Origins? Anything fun and cool you saw there? Anything you're really excited about? And you can see, even with the same color, the kind of depth and blending that I can get done on that fist, just by working in thin, in thin coats. Again, diluting your, the magic blue down and then adding just multiple layers of paint. And then once I've done all of it, I'll probably use a really kind of thin wash, almost glaze of the blue wash. And that will still get into some of those recesses. We'll see. We'll try it later and see how it works. Now getting these fingernails. I mean, I'm a dad of a teenage girl. So there are many times through her life that I have painted fingernails. I just never thought I'd be painting frost giant fingernails. And all that work that I did with her in the past would come in handy one day. You can tell by how smooth that went on, how much experience I had painting her nails when she was younger. I don't know if she'd let me do it now. She's 15 now, so she's probably really embarrassed I'm talking about her. He won't wash this. My son, on the other hand. And again, you can see kind of the depth already that I'm getting into that fist just by layering multiple layers in one pass. So uh, you don't necessarily have to let it dry. You just 
apply it, and then thin, and then just continue to go over it. So I'm going to go back over the knuckles again. And all of a sudden, you're going to get some pretty cool blending happening. Some pretty cool highlights. Like that. Cool. All right, so that is the blue for the skin. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to go back now and I am going to use, I'm going to add a little bit of, so on this arm for example, I'm going to go back in, I'm going to add a little bit of glacier blue to that electric blue. And it's going to be a mix. Now this isn't uh, completely, you know, 100% uh, the glacier blue, we're mixing. I, I rarely mix Vallejo paints just because you're trying to do it quickly. Um, and But this one, I'm going to take a little bit of glacier blue. Here, I'm going to move my palette a bit more in here. And a little bit of electric blue, and I'm just going to mix them in the middle. Let's see, until I get a bit of a lighter shade. Maybe too light. should be using a wet palette for this when I'm blending like this. But now this might be a bit bright. We'll see in a second here. Now, in somewhere that is not going to show too much, I'm going to test it. Uh, Ali, uh, sorry, your guests were really cool. Also, it was really neat to see how into everything your son was, right? It was really special. And it was Father's Day on the Sunday. So it was just really cool to have him there. So this area here obviously is going to be hidden by uh, the body. And you can see already I'm not, in, I'm, I'm thinking that that's a little bright. So I'm go back in, back it off a little bit, bring in some more electric blue, Went a little too bright too soon. A little too bright too soon. And go back in and there. So now what I'm doing is I am actually adding, you know how muscles when they ripple, especially if somebody as buff as Harsh and Egg is, they kind of have lines in them. Um, that's what I'm trying to get done. Now, again, I'm not a doctor or I don't understand giant physiology and mus musculature, even though it's very much like human. But what I am doing is I'm actually doing kind of little lines along the, along it, just to give it that sort of, that sort of effect where basically the sinewy part of that muscle is, is showing up so that you're really getting the idea that he is. He is jacked. Like that. So you guys can see that. And already, that part of the muscle or the arm is, is done with kind of a mid mid-tone highlight. Now here, the muscles wouldn't be as sinewy as, so I'm just gonna do kind of like a little circle on that side. And this is kind of your first level highlight. The electric blue is a mid-tone, but now this first level highlight is just going to go in all the areas that I've already painted with the electric blue, just to start to bring out some of the highlights and do all the nail, leaving that electric blue kind of in the, on the edges. Give highlights on the knuckles, Try and get right into the creases there. And again, you don't want to highlight in the creases because we want to keep those recesses darker. You want to highlight just above them, like here and here. And then right on the knuckle, you'd want to get like that. And we're just building up those highlights here. You can, I, I'll come run around like that. And then also here where the muscle meets, basically leaving only electric blue 
in that little crevice there. But you can already see how that's really lightened up that arm quite a bit already. Brilliant. I'm actually pretty happy with the way that looks, that's looking. Okay, so that's one arm done. Go in, we're going to add some to the face here. Oh, yeah, I said I was going to do the eye soon. Do that in a sec. But in the face, we're going to get the cheek here. And that's pretty much it there. We're also going to get the tip of the nose, the kind of the side of the nostril, little folds in the skin. But that's pretty much it. Oh, maybe just along here, this little crease there beside his nose, and then also kind of center lip because it should get darker as it gets closer to his beard on the sides. Then the other arm, which is jacked. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of, it's going to be solid in the end, but the, that line kind of texture is just going to give it a bit more texture into that arm and give the illusion that it is muscle under there, not just plastic. You can see I'm not really leaving too many lines in between those. Sorry, too, too much space in between those lines. Just a little bit. It's hard to get in here, so I'm just going to like highlight that area. And then again in here. Muscle's got texture, so we want to make sure we bring that out. And again, to blend, to make it look really cool, multiple thin layers would be the way to go. Okay. Do the hands here, again, knuckles. And you can see it looks really stark when it first goes on. But as you blend it back and as it dries, it will blend in a bit more. When you first put it on, it's going to be much more pronounced. And then as it dries, it darkens, as paint tends to do. It's funny, because when I started my career, or working out of school. I was actually a, a digital colorist at a comic book studio. And that actually taught me a lot about where light sits and where it hits. Okay, we're going to hit all the knuckles here, all the little folds. I should bring it right back to there. And then fingernails, because they tend to usually be a little lighter than the rest of the skin. And we'll continue to add that color there on those knuckles, uh, the, those nails to kind of bring them out a little bit on the edge there, a little bit more on the edge here. And again, we're just building up those highlights. The next one's going to be much closer to a to straight glacier blue, but not even quite yet. Okay, and you can see Harsh Nag. Let's put his arm back on here for a sec. We're already like 50 minutes in, and we've only done the skin, so this is going to be a long one, folks. But you can see already how he's starting to look. Pretty cool. Now our sepia wash is pretty much dry in most of it, which is good. And the skin, frankly, is probably going to take the longest just because we want that to look... It, it's a showpiece kind of... There's not a lot of texture there, so it takes, it takes time to make it kind of look interesting. All right. 
Now, let's, uh, I'm actually going to take some black wash. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm actually going to wait on that. What do we want to do next? Let's see. Uh, I think I want to continue on the skin. So we're going to get some more Glacier Blue, which is already still in the palette. And of course, Glacier Blue, um, you know, Vallejo paints tend to stay, um, one of the things I, I always say about them is they tend to stay a little wet, more wet in the palette than some of the other paints out there, which I like because now, even without a wet palette, I can come back to it and mix it in and we're still good to go. Or later, if I want to like hide some some mistakes that I made or, or whatever, I can I can do that. Now this might be a little light. This may be a little light. So again, on this area here, we're just gonna kinda like that's eh, a little light. Yeah, it's a little light. Just gonna wipe it off. Like magic. Add some more glacier blue into the middle there. Some more water. Bring that to a point and I roll my brush along the palette in order to give a bit of a now for this a bit of a point to it. For this I'm gonna focus on some of the only the highest areas where the light would hit. I'm still doing kind of a line pattern like that. But now I'm only gonna do kind of like right there the nail, because again we want the nail to be brighter. But we're just hitting this is kind of like this isn't the extreme highlight, but this is like the highest highlight that we're probably gonna use before we just touch it with glacier blue alone. So here we are. Again, we're only getting the highest areas that they would be hit. I'm going to hit all the nails so that they kind of pop. Knuckles, like that. And then this area of the, of the thumb. And then this area of the hand as well, of course would get a lot of light. But I still want to leave a bit of a divot in there. Let's see how that's really coming along nicely. And we're, we're, we're getting to that true, that in my opinion, that true kind of frost giant color. A little less saturated. And I'm just going in here now, picking out muscle muscle formations, I should say. Keeping it smaller, trying to just mostly get the edges of where these muscles would hit, and trying to get kind of where the light would hit. I think that arm is done, that part. You can go in with this same color a little bit, add a bit more, and it'll even make it lighter. Because again, we're diluting our paints. So, and I want to make sure that when I put this in, see where the light hits. Oh, see, I read it a little wrong. So sometimes, if you take a piece off, you want to come back in and add a bit more here, because that is kind of where the light would hit. And here is where see had kind of misjudged that based on the orientation that I was using when I was holding it. So there we go. There. Okay. Pull that arm out for now. Eventually I will glue it in place. So we're just going to add it to the tip of the nose, bridge of the nose, little dot on the side of the nostril, this cheek, the crease, nose, nostril, and then 
center of the lip. And you can see that we're really getting some nice depth now into that face. And then this arm. Okay, so light's coming from the top for us today. At least that's what I'm using as my light source. So it's going to be strongest right in the middle. And then I'm going to kind of feather it down a little bit down the sides. Focusing it on the top of this muscle structure and then kind of feathering it down but not allowing it to hit all of it. I'm basically just on the top end of these muscle formations following the ridge of this one here and then just kind of feathering it down a little bit here. But again, not going right into the deepest areas, just where the light would hit, potentially. And here, maybe on the, on the, even though it's under, here it probably hit the elbow a little on the forearm there, along there. There we go. Of course, it would hit the top of this part of the forearm. Sometimes it's tough to get into those areas, but there we go. Okay. Again, that skin is lightening quite a bit more as we go here. And then the hand, this fist, focusing on the knuckle and then bringing it back a bit. There's a little vein there that I wanted to catch. This area here, don't focus on the divot. Keep the divot nice and present still. That. Knuckle, knuckle, knuckle these knuckles here. I like to do like a little line in the middle of the finger just to denote kind of the bone line. And this isn't true wet blending, of course, because we're not blending two wet colors together. But we are building up layers of highlights as we add more and more of a light color to a darker color to do that. There we go. That fist is looking pretty good. Top edge of the finger here. Of course, that would get some light. We'd have a little dot of light at the top on the hand there on the inside of the palm and a little bit down here as well. Okay, that layer is done. Then we have one, I think, final layer of, now this should be the almost final layer of Glacier Blue here. Um, again, you could continue to do this until you build up to full Glacier Blue, but for our purposes, I think I'm just going to do one more. And I actually did more of the kind of sinewy texture there than I did here. And I actually like the sinewy texture better, but it's okay. We can bring a lot more of that in with the glacier blue as well. So now we're definitely going to do that because now I'm seeing the effectiveness of it. I'm basically just bringing a little electric blue into this glacier blue, diluting it quite a bit. Test it on here first. Again, the arm is like this. So we're going to just going to do like this. You see how that dries. A little highlight in here. That that might be a bit much. I don't know if that's going to blend well or not, but we're going to find out once it starts to dry. Now at this point, I'm just doing little little dots of this color. 
pretty much, or lines even in some areas. So for this, I will just do along there, a little dot there, maybe a dot there. This is the extreme highlight, in my opinion. Oh, that went down a little bit too far. But we're just now adding the final kind of extreme highlight on all the areas. And hopefully once that starts to dry, it will blend because we've diluted it quite a bit. And it is already doing that. I will do a line down here, and I will have it build a little bit this way, and I will add a bit more here. But for me, that's exactly kind of the effect that I'm going for for this. And you can see on this side, Aha, it blended quite a bit. So I'm actually going to come in here and even do a bit more. Because it blended a lot more than I expected it to. When it dried, which is nice. You never quite know until you get right in there. But the nice thing is that I can literally go back in here and continue to add a little dots and lines to give it more depth. Okay, this arm is pretty much done. Might go pure glacier blue on a little bit. Here I'm going to add it a little line under the cheek like that. Tip of the nose again. Small dot nostril small line middle of the of the lip and there okay once again final arm it'll be the most clear at the top like that now i'm really starting to push that uh I'm really starting to push that kind of sinewy muscle texture with this. But I'm trying to just keep it at the top. Like that. Of the mini. And again, thinking about light source and where that's coming from will really help you to get a cool kind of effect and result for this. We are spending the most time on the skin here just because, again, I think that is a, a major area of attention. Uh, when you look at a mini, you look at the eyes, which is why kind of getting eyes done right is important, or faces at least. Um, and then skin is important too. Uh, it, it's one of those things that, that, you know, we can have a lot of, because it also doesn't have a lot of texture, so uh, we have to kind of work it a little bit more in some cases. In some cases, skin has texture if it's older skin or, or like a monster skin that has lots of divots and, you know, boils or, or whatever, but for this case, very smooth, smooth skin. So we need to do the work to make it look awesome. Okay. There we go. Okay, that is done. And again, with every stroke, you're getting a, a finer kind of highlight there. Okay. Again, if you guys have any thoughts, questions about the paints we're using or anything like that, 
Um, we are going to add one last highlight, like I said, pure glacier blue. Moving into our second hour here. And we're definitely going to need another session for this. Okay, for, for this one, I'm going to be very careful. This one, I'm literally just doing a couple little dots on Knuckles, all the peaks, all the serious peaks. The ones that really stick out that would kind of get the most the most attention. Just like the little dot. If you ever watch if you if you look at comic books actually, if you become kind of a bit of a student of of comic books and how you know the colorist adds different um, highlights and such, you'll see that there are little dots on kind of the rounder areas and lines on the longer areas. You can see all I did was just add a little kind of dot line on that, and I'm going to add a little in there on that too. There we go. Okay, that arm is done. Go back here, right on the cheek, little dot, little dot on the tip of the nose, dot on the nostril, other nostril. Lip. This one, work out a, a little dot here. Okay, uh, sometimes I get in the zone and I get a little quiet and forget that I have a live stream and a tutorial to teach. Still onto the glacier blue here, folks. For those just tuning in, we are adding, we are mixing glacier blue with electric blue. And now we're almost 100%. Oh, that was bad. Now we're almost 100% glacier blue. Just adding extreme highlights. I'm going to add lines on the on the fingernails so that they really pop. And I'm basically just going around adding little highlight dots and lines to really make those details pop. There. Okay, skin is done. You can see this is dried and that's how that arm looks. Perfect. Okay. All right, so skin is done. I think, uh, do we go in there and do his eyes? I think we will. We're going to add a little bit of um, detail in here. I usually don't necessarily do this until the end. But the reason I decided to do this now is because I'm going to do the skull and stuff, and I just want the eyes done. We did not use a blue wash in the end. Uh, I felt like the blending is actually good enough, and it's in the, the you know we got enough dark in the recesses that we have some really good contrast. Um, okay, so believe it or not, I am still going to... Uh, no, I'm not. I'll use my... 040 brush. Nice fine tip for the eyes. Small brushes aren't always better. When I first started painting, I thought so. But that is not the case always. So when I do eyes, I try and come in from the side. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here. Oh man, I always get a little nervous. My heart starts to beat and I stop talking. I'm just going to focus for a sec so I can do the eye here. that. Now we've got a harsh nag eye. The whites of the eye anyways. Go in on the other side. Make sure that it's also that the paint is also diluted a little bit and flows really well because you don't want to be jabbing in there trying to get that paint to transfer and then making a mistake. There he's got eyes.
Now, instead of black to dot these eyes, I'm actually going to use um, blue. I'm go I was going to use electric blue uh, because he would have blue eyes. So I don't know if electric blue is going to be too bright. Uh, I'm going to use magic blue, actually. Yeah, let's try magic blue. Magic blue is a bit of a darker blue. We're just gonna use a little bit of magic blue here. Again, get it in your, get it on your. I like to come in from the edge. Hold my breath. There. And that'll do for almost two because on the on the top here I have a bit too much white on the top. It makes him look like he's looking down a bit. That's better. And Terry uh, Latorco, who painted with us at Origins, um, had a very good point, and that was, if you paint them a little cross-eyed, then it looks like they're looking at you. Otherwise, they are all messed up. So that is Harshnag's eyes. That worked. Cool. Okay. You ready for the really cool trick? You get pure dead white. If I can find it here, dead white. And I'm going to add just a little. Oh, you know what? Let's let that. Let's let that dry first, the magic blue, before we do that. I'm going to go to uh, my black wash, uh, and what we're going to do with the black wash is we are going to, if I can find it here, um, I missed a couple areas last time, so we're just going to make sure that we get that those areas this time around. Dilute it a little bit. I always dilute my washes just a touch. The areas we missed are this bracer or at least the metal on this bracer. Like that. And there was one other area that I saw that I missed. With black wash. Do I want to add it to the belt? Mm, yeah, I think I will. So I'm also adding a black wash to the belt which has some really cool ridges, which will catch that wash. Spreading it along the belt and making sure that it gets where it needs to go. Unfortunate because the time of Harshneck has come and gone in our live stream of Storm King's Thunder. So my players probably won't be seeing this many at the table. Um, unfortunately, but happy to have painted them. Okay. Man, that skin really pops. It's really looking good. Everyone's really quiet in the chat. I'm going to go over to uh, the Realmsmith Twitch. I think they're the same when it comes to chats. I think the chat goes on both. But let's find out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on both. So I'll just stick to the D&D &D one. That's fine. Okay. All right. Again, if you've uh, got any tips or want to chat, say hi. 
Questions, comments, any of that stuff? Sound off in the uh, in the chat, and I'll try and answer your questions. All right. So again, with the concept of going from the inside out, um, I am going to next do the pants, I think, um, and kind of the, these brown leather areas. So we used heavy sienna for those. And then we added a black wash. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use um, some more heavy sienna and go in and just kind of highlight those areas real quick. Just to kind of bring some of that richness of that color back. And then we're going to use tan to highlight. So I'm just going to come back in here that just hitting this really quick making sure that black wash is still seen in the recesses and in all the folds of course kind of like so I also forgot this buckle this buckle is supposed to be I think I forgot the second part of this, the tutorial on this whole arm. So I'll have to come back and do that. Again, so what I'm doing here is I'm bringing back that base coat into a kind of a, a mid-tone highlight. Just to bring back some of that nice, rich sienna color. Back into it. Just so when we go to the tan, it's not super, super uh, drastic, I should say. Oh, I didn't like that because I went into the, I like that. A bit more sienna up here. I'm just kind of hitting the folds and the highlights and the areas the light would hit a bit more just to give it some more richness back. That's pretty much it there. I'll go in, just hit a couple areas out of this armor. In and around here. I've diluted this just like I did the, <clears throat> the electric blue because you want it to um, blend on the model. So when you dilute a little bit, it tends to subdue it as it dries. It doesn't come on so str as strong. If you put this right out of the bottle, it would be super intense and you're not getting that kind of like subtle gradient. And in my opinion, it doesn't look as good. So there we go. Okay. Now, I said I was going to start on the pants, and that's what I meant. So, pants do the same thing. Staying away from the recesses. I really like the work that the wash did. So, I'm really trying not to upset that. But what happens is sometimes wash will dry on the peaks of things. And you don't want the dark wash on, say, the top of a fold. You want it on the bottom of the fold. Or sorry, yeah, you don't want the wash. You want it to kind of add the, the, the shadows, not the, the mid-tones or highlights. So basically what this, this is doing is going into and adding some of these higher areas or highlighting them back into, into the miniature here, bringing back to the forefront like that. And even if you don't plan on getting this many or you don't have this many, Frankly, um, you know, it helps to have uh, these techniques down because you can use this brown on any barbarian, ranger, any leather that you do. Uh, these techniques are transferable to other minis and to other colors. We have a question here in the chat. Question, could you explain the feathering technique again? By Thron, of course I can. Um, 
So feathering for me, all that means for me is that when you, I'll, I'll show you here on, on, on one of the kind of knee pads, is where you deposit the paint, and, and feathering can be different things to different people. Um, uh, and I totally just realized that we have the live from Origins Game Fair <laughs> logo still on our, <laughs> still on our, uh, that's hilarious. I may need to take a short break and go and fix that. That is too funny. Because we're not live from Origins Game Fair today. Um, we are in my studio in Toronto, not in Columbus, Ohio. Feathering. I deposit the paint on and then I pull away and then, and then kind of spread it along with a feathering technique, if that makes sense. You're basically blending it out to a tapered kind of area or point. So um, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right. Uh, but I, I, I can, again, I can show you. So if, if I want to blend this out, I'm going to start with paint here and then I'm going to pull it in the direction that I want it to blend. And as you're kind of pulling your brush up, you're lifting it away and you're blending it into the rest. That's what I mean by feathering. Like I said, feathering will mean different things to different people, but that's what it means to me. I think some of this sienna back on his boots moccasins rather because because the north i really like what the wash did on these moccasins it's very cool and then i also have to paint those um the the, the ropes on his moccasins as well turambar 28 says hi I'm painting right now coincidentally so I'm definitely quiet. You are so much better than me, and I really appreciate your tips. Of course, no problem. That's what we're here for. And, and frankly, it's amazing. When we, did, when we do the um, classes at Origins, it's amazing how um, everyone's minis come out more or less the same after a class like that because we're applying the same techniques across kind of a, a, a multitude of, uh, sorry, uh, across the same miniature, and no matter if you've been painting forever, if you've just been painting for a short time, um, you still get, you know, everybody tends to get a really cool, really cool um, result from it. I will be right back. I am going to maybe try and switch out this, this uh, interface here, because we are not live from Origins. So just hang out with me, folks. I am right here, I promise. I am not going anywhere just need to find um, this here and try my best to switch it back to our original interface which would be great back in one second One sec. Is this the one? There we go. All fixed. Bit of a rush setting up today, so unfortunately I uh, <laughs> left that on there. All right, that is way better. Sorry about that, folks. We are, again, not live from Origins. All right, so. I think it's looking good. I think it's looking really good. We're an hour and a half in. All we've done is skin and kind of the uh, leather areas, but uh, that's okay because again, we can go. We can do another third one as well to just make sure that you guys get all of these techniques down, um, so you can do them at home. Okay, tan. With tan, I am going to use. It, it's a fairly um, different color from the heavy sienna, so I am going to blend a little bit here um, because I don't want it to be too stark uh, a contrast so I'm just adding a little tan to that heavy a uh, little heavy sienna to the tan just so it's not as I am going to dilute it like this and for these I'm just going to do almost like an edge highlight um, I don't want to because the, the wash has done a lot there's a lot of texture and folds in there so I'm just literally just going to a little bit of an edge highlight along the edges here of 
the gloves. Just, and I, I know it looks like I'm speeding through, but I'm going to pull this down, again, feathering it. But, you know, for, for the sake of, of what this is and the effect that I'm going for, I just want to be able to add a quick highlight to some of these leather areas. And as that dries, that will be subdued a fair amount, which will look better. Okay, so that's good. But from afar, again, like when doing these miniatures, especially for D and D, you know, you're 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 using some of the monsters that we do maybe once ever in your game, and so you want to manage your time accordingly for that reason. You know, spend spend more time on your. Um, I'm gonna add a bit more heavy sienna to that for this area because I, I do want the, the the leather kind of the, the breastplate or the main part of it to look really nice. Um, but for the most part, I was gonna say if, you know spend the time on your on your player characters, spend you know the time on the pieces that you've really been looking forward forward to doing. You know those areas that you like. Oh, I bought this mini, and I'm, it's not even going to appear in my campaign, but I just want to paint it because it's so cool. Uh, you know, if, if you're ob obviously if you're trying to compete or paint for a prize or something like that, you definitely want to take a bit more time. But for me, I'm just trying to get minis on the table that look cool. And uh, for me, that's all that really matters. And so, you know, the rule that I use is kind of like the arm's length rule. If it looks good from an arm, arm's length away, it's probably good enough for the table. You can see what I did here. I, again, feathered uh, kind of a, a pattern onto there so that you're getting kind of the highlights in the corners, which actually wouldn't work that way, I just realized. <laughs> the light would actually pool in the center and not like that, but whatever. What are you going to do? It's a frost giant. I'm not too worried about it. And I'm even creating some like folds that don't even exist in some cases just because it's fun to do and you're just adding a bit more interest. But you can see I'm kind of doing this sort of whiskey, whiskey pattern. Not whiskey like whiskey. <laughs> uh, I'm whisking my brush back and forth so that I can get kind of this cool fold textured effect on the armor. And I think it's looking real nice. No problem, Bythron. Bythron? Bythron. Again, if you guys have any more questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Now I'm moving fairly quickly here, like I said, um, just to see and make sure we can fit as much as we possibly can into these episodes. So if there's anything that you missed or would like clarification on, please do not hesitate. Okay, adding this highlight to the rest of the armor here. Um, add it down the center of the knee guard, kind of the edge of the pants here in the center. On this side too, a little bit here and there. On here, it would be hitting kind of the top here of this fold. It would hit the ridge, of course, which I'll use this, the side of my brush for. It's a little trick with sharp areas. You can use the side of your brush because it'll catch better. Um, of course, the pants here, which are kind of peaking a little bit, and maybe in here. And then just the edge of these folds on the pants. Now, the pants won't necessarily be as reflective as the leather will. So I'm, I'm going to stop there with the pants. I'm not going to highlight any more than, than, than just that. Um, 
because they wouldn't catch as much of the light. I am going to highlight um, the leather more when I get there. For right now, I'm just focusing on getting this bracer done. We're going to hit the edge of this one here and down the center. And that, again, will add some delineation between the arm and the bracer. There. Looking good. Now, finally, I'm going to get really close to full tan here. Diluted a fair bit so that it blends. But then we're just going to, in straight lines, just kind of like that. And again, it looks kind of intense now, but once it dries, it'll, it will subdue a fair amount. Oops. A little too heavy handed on that one. A bit more tan on here. That's a bit harsh, but we will see how it is harsh, Nag. Sorry, bad dad joke again. Um yeah, those highlights are a bit much, but they may get a little subdued when they dry because the paint is diluted. See, even these ones here, can't even see them so much anymore. So I'm just going to... You can see that leather is really looking, starting to look really cool. Hit just the center of some of these folds here. Center of these folds here. And I kind of fix that area by putting center highlights, closing it up a bit so that, because the light would be, would hit the center of that. very tips of these lines there and there either side of this fold bottom of this top of that okay it's important to clean your brush even in the middle of like a color if I'm on a, on a color for a long time I'll make sure that I clean my brush um, even before I switch colors, just so, just so I can get a nice, clean, um, because it tends to muck up, muck up the, the surface a bit. I think I want to add a little fine line at the top of these just to give an idea that it, they're beveled a little bit. Okay. And someone here as well. There and here. Perfect. And then his bracers. The last place that we need tan for now. I went right into, see the beauty is, I just grab this brush that's dry, pull the paint right out of that, because I went into the recess, which I didn't want to do. I wanted to just hit the edge here.
can see how the edge that I just added on that bracer really makes that stick out. And that's the idea, is you really want to delineate. On these minis, you don't necessarily want real world highlights and shadows. You want high contrast, even obviously sometimes more than exists in real life. Just so things really come through and you can see what's going on. Okay, that is the, the end, the last of the dark, heavy sienna stuff. I think I already did this. Yeah, I did. This guy is good. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Looking good. Harshnag's looking good. 25 minutes. I'm very new to painting in general. Do you usually use one base color for your entire mini? Uh, so no, A Narun, good to see you back. Initiative Coffee, BJ, good to have you. Do you, do you find it easier to paint more beast-like shapes such as the Triceratops or more human-like ones like the Giants here? Um, I think each type represents its own um, challenges. I think it's harder to make flat areas like skin look better, look good because there's lots of blending and highlighting and, and things that you need to do. With the Triceratops, for example, you do a dry brush, man, you could get a really, really cool effect. So I would say that characters or, or minis with more texture are often easier to make look really, really great, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, for Turambar 28, new to painting, no, uh, so for the base coat, uh, these WizKids minis, D&D minis come pre-primed. You don't have to prime them, so you can put paint from the bottles right on. Um, but no, I used uh, the last episode, I used all kinds of colors uh, to base coat the entire thing. It took me a full two hours just to add base coats. Um, and so that base color is, uh, if you're talking about primer, then yes, primer is all the same color. This one was all this color gray before we started last week, or two weeks ago, I should say. Um, but when it comes to base coating, all different colors based on the, 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 the section that I would be doing. Okay, he is looking darn good. We have 25 minutes um, left to go. Uh, maybe I'll start on the fur and stuff because I think that that'll get, give us the best kind of bang for our buck at this point. So for the uh, skull, I was going to do a dry brush. Um, because, and for the leather too. So maybe I will do that. So for the, let's see, for the leather, so we used a leather brown, or heavy brown, not sure. Then we used uh, a sepia wash on top of it. So you get this really cool kind of depth and, and contrast effect on all of it. And then um, we are going to use leather brown the color first. Now shake that up. Put some in our palette. And we're going to grab a dry brush, which is, this is our Vallejo dry brush. And with dry brushing, for those of you who don't, you, you load your, your brush and then you wipe most of it off on a paper towel. It feels counterintuitive, but the point is, is that you're, you just want to get dry residue onto the mini in the area. So we're going to dry brush this with leather brown and basically what that's doing is we're going against the grain so that the the paint only deposits on the highest points of that color so or of that area so it basically picking up the texture in that area now this leather brown might be too close to our base color here so we're not going to see a massive difference right away but it will absolutely help moving forward. So we're just going to do all the leather areas, padding back here. We obviously don't want to lose or, or ruin our wash. You have to be very careful with this step. You want to make sure you're only putting enough paint on the mini so that it's catching the higher kind of areas. And I think that's the only, le those are the only leather areas. For the skull, we're going to use a Let's see here. Uh, for the skull, we're going to use, I think I'm going to use heavy brown for that. 
Now with heavy brown, it's another extra opaque paint, um, and it goes on nice and thick as a base coat, and it's good for dry brushing for that fa fact because it comes out thicker and a bit drier um, than others would. So wipe that off a bit. Get in there with the heavy brown. Now again, this might be a little dark for this base coat, but let's see. No, it's not bad. So I'm using a bit more of an overbrush. The difference between an over overbrush and a dry brush for me is that an overbrush, you're depositing more paint on the mini. So you're brushing the paint over it rather than brushing the dry residue on it. Now with this, all I'm doing basically is the same thing that we did with the Heavy Sienna on the leather, which is bring back some of that mid-tone uh, on the mini and lightens it up a little bit and uh, takes away kind of the wash that was deposited on the surface areas that it shouldn't have been. Now, if I had a khaki here, I would probably use a khaki next for this bone area, but I am not going to do that. Instead, I am going to go right to Plague Brown. Now, Plague Brown is a bit of a yellowy color, but it'll make this skull look nice and aged. That's the plan anyway, so... You can see already that it's lightening up. Now, obviously, we want to get this not to a white, but like a sick, a sickly kind of off-white bone color. So we're just building it up in stages here. And this yellow color kind of gives it that age sort of. If you're very careful around the face here, we spent all that time highlighting the face that we don't want to mess that up. So when we get to close to the face, I'm just going to take it a little easier, make sure not to ruin it, and then go from there. That was a bit much. You can see it went right on, kind of streaky. That's not what we want. We want it to go on nice and smooth. Question from Naroon. Can you say something about what kind of pressure you use on your brush when you dry brush? Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, absolutely. So really depends on the texture. Um, for, for me, sorry, this is plague brown. Uh, right there. Uh, for me, it really depends on the texture. It depends on how much, actually depends on the paint. Um, it depends on, at first, for example, when I first, when I first load my brush with a color, um, I am going to apply really little pressure because that brush is full of paint. But as you start to dry brush, you're applying more and more pressure to get that paint off. So really, rather than the amount of pressure that you, that you apply, I guess the more important question is, um, how much paint do you want to deposit on that miniature at, at that time? And that's what, that's what educates the amount of pressure that I use, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Okay, so I added that plague brown, got this really nice kind of yellowy. Now I'm gonna use bone white. Now this is gonna be a pretty big jump. So for this one, I really want a dry brush. Uh, and I'm gonna go light on it to test the waters first. Um, make sure that this, this um, brush is really dry. Bone white, as usual, wipe it out off on the paper towel until there's hardly anything coming off it. Um, and then I'm testing it along the edges. Now for, for dry brushing, again, you want the, the areas, when you start, once I've, I've just loaded this brush, when I start, I wanna make sure that, um, it, 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 well, it's gonna be, it's gonna have the most um, paint on it that it will for this round of dry brushing before I reload the brush. So if that's the case, I'm gonna hit the highest areas first because they should be the brightest, if that makes sense. So I went here and I, I got the ridge right away, and now that there's less on the brush, now I'm gonna go around and kind of do the rest. And every time I load my brush for this dry brush, I'm gonna do the same thing. 
dry brushing is just such a really cool, easy effect if you can get it subtle enough. Most people don't have the patience to build up and to wipe it all off and to do it properly, but if you do it properly, you kind of start to get this kind of effect. Like that. Now it's starting to look like a nasty, nasty skull. I forgot that this is all bone over here too, all up his back, on his shoulder. Again, I'm loading my brush, wiping most of it off. Once that's done, I'm hitting the top areas first because it's going to get the most paint. And then moving to the rest. And because we use that playground, play, playground, that plague brown in the recesses, we're going to have that. It's going to look really cool and antique-y. No, antique -y? Is that even a word? Okay. There. That skull is almost there. That's, that's the look we're going for. That's, that's the kind of approach that we want. I don't know what to do in the recessed eyes. I kind of like it brown like that, but I don't know. All right, and then we are going to go to off-white. This is a final kind of edge highlight dry brush. On, jeez, <laughs> losing brushes here. DM Matt G says, loving this tutorial, Jason. Thanks so much for this. As a side note, I just did this mini the other day, so I'm kicking myself a little. That said, what's the mini for the next tutorial? Oh, that's a great question. I have no idea. I haven't decided yet. Uh, stay tuned, though, to our uh, Instagram, um, which you can follow us uh, on at Instagram. Um, I keep forgetting to change these colors. Sorry, folks. It's, it, I'm producing by myself tonight. So... Um, our Instagram is uh, Instagram slash RealmSmithTV, um, and you can oftentimes we will announce which minis we do next on our channel. So stay tuned. Next week we're going to have to continue to do Harsh Night because we're not done him yet. Um, so he's going to be at least one more week, and then we'll go from there. So, like I said, now I've got off white, so I'm just depositing that off white along the ridge where the light would hit the most. First off. Then I'm going to hit the ridge above the eye sockets with that off-white, like that, cheekbone, like that, slightly, bridge of the nose. Again, the most paint that's going to be on here for this kind of um, load is going to be right now. And it's going to get less and less, but I'm just going to work my way around the mini, focusing on the most... Kind of, or the, high, the, the areas that should be highlighted the most that are closest to the light source. And then as less paint becomes on my brush, then I can kind of go around and do the rest of it. But this will lighten the mini fairly significantly, significantly in this area. Because now we're getting that like bleached, sun bleached bone kind of color. And that is where I'm, I think I'm going to stop. I don't want to add too much off white because this should be like an old kind of worn out skull like that. I am going to get the bottom of the teeth just so they really kind of show through here. Like that. Sweet. Uh, before I forget to do it, because I probably will, I'm going to wash off my uh, my dry brush, and then I am going to add, where's my gun metal? I'm going to add gun metal to the uh, kind of band. There's like this metal band around the snout of the it's a white dragon skull that Harsh Knight wears on his head. So I'm going to just base coat that right away in that silver, in that, sorry, in that gun metal. And then we'll come back and we'll highlight it later. 
or at a wash and highlight it later. But for now, I just want to make sure I do that before I, before I forget. We'll just base coat that. And then we add a wash to it. We'll get all that nice texture back on that. Cool. All right. Now we can go back to the leather a bit. Uh, that leather now, now that we um, used kind of, uh, we dry brushed it with leather. Actually, we didn't do it on the straps, but that's that's kind of okay because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Plague Brown as the highlight for those leather areas. And on the straps, sometimes the easiest way to do straps or the most effective way, I don't want to say easiest, really. Most effective way is to use the edge. Oh, way too much. That was bad. Again, get a, a brush that is clean and magic eraser. Boom, it's gone. Um, I'm going to have to do leather brown first. So with some leather brown... Just to go through and then add lines, you can use the edge of your brush to do this along the edge of the straps, like that. See, and now, again, the contrast, right? So we're adding the contrast along the edge of the straps. And that will subdue again a bit because it is diluted. And where you can use the edge, use the edge, this kind of the side of your brush and run it along the edge. Where you can't, just be careful to try and make as, as fine and as thin a line as possible so that you're not really muddying it and gunking it up. Like right here, perfect edge, see? Perfect edge, hard edge on the mini that I can just use to deposit that paint there and get that effect. There, so that looks good. Then once that's dry, maybe I'll use some Plague Brown to highlight that part. We are close to the end of our session, folks. Wow. I'll do this strap as well. Uh, and then we'll and then we'll call it quits, and then we'll have to continue on on Frost Giant next week. Crazy. Again, I, I like you know we'll do this every once in a while where we take kind of longer sessions to do minis based on you know complexity or if it's a popular one. I have a question. What would you guys like us to what would you guys like to see us paint next after we're done harsh nag after the next couple of weeks? What for you guys is kind of at the top of your list? What do you have on your table that you've been wanting to paint that you would love us to do a tutorial for? That's that's an even better question, I think. What do you guys want to see from us? And then also, if you're if you're watching this afterwards, after the fact, in our uh, in the uh, like the VOD version on YouTube, uh, add comments because we we do review all the comments and listen to, to what you guys have to say and suggestions and all that kind of stuff. So, if you guys have miniatures that you want uh, us to do next, please, 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 please let us know. Okay. One line here and one line here. There. Well, folks, I think that is it for Harshnag for this uh, for this week. Believe it or not. Just to kind of review what we've done, uh, the skin took a little while, which was expected. I don't know when I'm going to glue his uh, his arm on, but we'll figure that out. So this is how Harshnag looks after two sessions. 
two two-hour sessions. This is a larger mini, lots of detail, but you can see we took some extra detail and interest in his back and in his skin. I think my favorite part of this mini is probably this kind of area of muscle and into his fist. Um, I think that turned out all right. So again, uh, skull is done, um, although I should maybe have uh, added more on the bottom. We'll see. Skull is pretty much done. Arms, skin is, are, is done. All the brown areas of the leather and the, and the, and the pants and the cloth are done. Uh, and now we're working on the leather, and we're going to be highlighting that with some plague brown next time. We already did the straps on the arms, and you can see how they're already starting to stick out. Also did his eyes. Uh, because uh, it was just easier to get in there at this point than it may be later. Uh, for next week, we're going to focus on fur, uh, the metal areas, and finishing those off as well as finishing off kind of the edges in kind of a leather color, um, as well as his beard. Uh, and his beard is one of those things that is kind of closed in on multiple angles, so I wanted to get those areas done and then go back into the beard and, uh, you know, you could dry brush that beard, but I, my feeling is I kind of want to paint kind of strands of hair in, which sounds daunting, but it's not. Uh, no stress. Um, but maybe we'll dry brush it. We'll have to see. Or maybe we'll start with dry brushing, and then we'll add some strands. I don't know. But we are going to use a blue wash on that beard so that it's, it's going to be like bright, bright white um, when we're done with it. And then uh, we're going to add glow effects to the axe. Um, this axe, which is Gert's great axe, um, according to uh, legend and lore, and then maybe add some OSL, which actually maybe it's good I didn't do this, add some OSL effects to the edges where the glow from the axe would hit, top of the arm, shoulder, all of that kind of stuff, and, and, and you know, kind of maybe even a bit of the back, but that'll be cool. And then after that, we do all the effects then we will finish the base with snow effects and some grass tufts is probably the plan moving forward from there thanks again everyone for watching it's been another awesome episode um, with all of you chatting and questions and all of that wonderful stuff we wouldn't do this uh, without you guys in fact we wouldn't want to um, and or couldn't do it with, without you guys and in fact wouldn't want to so Make sure uh, that you spread the word to all of you uh, who have gaming groups and friends out there who paint. Please make sure that yeah, you let them know that we're on 5 to 7 uh, Eastern every Sunday night. Um, we are painting uh, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures uh, by WizKids with Vallejo Paints from the D&D line. And it's been an awesome go so far. This was episode 6. Um, if you want to know more about Realmsmith, you can head to realmsmith.tv where you can uh, find out about our monthly adventure box, uh, which we're very, very excited about. We're launching a new adventure July 1st, uh, which will lead into further into the campaign where the first uh, set of six uh, left off. Um, as well, we play live D&D uh, &D every Monday night, 7.30 Eastern time on our Twitch and YouTube channels at slash Realmsmith. The VOD version of this episode and every episode ahead of, uh, before this will be on the YouTube channel. Uh, sorry, the Realmsmith YouTube, so it's YouTube slash Realmsmith, or the official D&D &D YouTube as well. They've been great enough to, to add these because they feel that it's awesome content for you guys uh, to learn how to paint some miniatures and all of that fun stuff. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube, hit the little bell icon on the Realmsmith YouTube, and we'll let you know, obviously, when those uh, VOD episodes go live. And make sure that you follow us here on uh, Twitch, on the D&D &D Twitch, as well as on the Realmsmith Twitch Thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you either tomorrow night on our live stream or in a week when we finish off this awesome miniature from WizKids. Have a good one, guys.